Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV Velocities and Music, the best kept secret in music reviews today. Ariel Pink's Haunted Graffiti, Mature Themes. Okay, mm -hmm. this is Ariel Pink's Haunted Graffiti second album. Now, Ariel Pink's obviously been, um, or the alias of Ariel Pink has obviously been around for a while, but the second album from the whole kind of band scene, um, Mature Themes. Uh, before today came out in mm -hmm. well, it was before today, but it was 2010, about <laughs> yeah. two years ago. We reviewed it, and actually, Tom, that was one that you and I disagreed on. Uh, I, I really did not like it. Yeah. There were a couple of good tracks to me, but in general, I just thought it was a little bland. That, that was one of those albums that year that more the more I listened to it, the more I was like, wow, this is some really cool. I just had it was so fun and free mm -hmm. that I just it just got me. But the thing the thing about that album was it was just. It was really immature. Like yeah. everything about it, the songwriting was immature, the lyrics were immature, the vocal presentation, everything was just blase. No one really cared or seemed to care about the overall presentation of mm -hmm. the sound. Um, whereas I think that matured, will you, or you know, follow me on this one here, on mature themes. They, they, it's a more mature album. In fact, mm -hmm. the title track, Mature Themes, is actually, I think, one of the best songs I've heard in a long time. It, it is one of these, the most cohesive tracks um, mm -hmm. that we've ever heard out of this out of this band, and, and for sure, just one of the most solid tracks this year. Now, I, I, I really think that um, the, the main maturities came down to the songwriting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's what it's all about. I mean, you can tell here hear that Ariel Pink really went with his gut instinct on these tracks. And he didn't stray too far from that until it got to like the production stage and you can tell that he put a lot of thought into it. And that's what I think is really cool is, is from a songwriting standpoint to just, to just roll with it, to just go with whatever comes to you and then from there take that kind of raw uh, form of whatever you have right. and, then, and then stick with it but just shape it a little bit and produce it in such a way that enhances what you originally had. Yeah, and I mean the sound is is ev on every track is just so dense. It's almost mm -hmm. on some of these tracks it's almost space rock. I'd say yeah. I'd say track um, track six, early birds of Babylon, um, Nostradamus even, and yeah, me, exactly, mm -hmm. which is actually one of my favorite tracks on the album. Yeah, it's I like just, that one. It's just so washy and just spacey. I love it. Um, it's just created a really good mood. Now, but I think that you know just the the crazy you know distorted guitar that you hear this totally lo-fi. Production, uh -huh. and then you also have you know the the driving bass lines, and then all the crazy sounds that they incorporate. You know, it's really really dense, and there's always something uh, going on in in the parts, the actual instrumentation, the mm -hmm. the parts that were written. I mean, they have focus to them. They oh, all definitely. have like a purpose. They to all them. have purpose. I I totally agree. Nothing in there is just completely out of yeah, hand, for sure. you know, just completely out there. I mean, like the songwriting is kind of out there, and then he just works with it, but it never gets too far mm -hmm. in, in, in comparison with how he set up the songs to yeah. be. Now, did you start off liking this album? No, I didn't. Yeah, me either. I, I, I actually hated it at yeah, first. I was like, man, this here's going to be another Ariel Pink album that I don't like yeah, that I, everyone else Tom, likes. Tom was dreading reviewing this. I was. I was like, we have to do it. We have <laughs> to do it. But, um, but, you know, as I kept listening to it, I got to know the tracks a little more. What I found that I ended up liking about this album is that I feel like it's got a lot of balance. Um, it, it, you have the more absurd songs, but they never get too absurd. Mm -hmm. And they're balanced out with some more serious songs, uh, like Mature Themes, Only in Dreams, the closing track, mm -hmm. Baby. Those almost have kind of more of like a, like a 60s kind of yeah, vibe to them at times. Um, and then you have just the you know songs like Schnitzel, Boogie, and Kinski Assassin that are just ridiculous. Yeah, almost have a punk vibe. Yeah, but the, but the serious tracks never get too serious. It almost feels the same way that like Ween's more serious tracks sure. do. It's a great comparison. Um, and then the, the really like absurd tracks mm -hmm. are never just too over the top. And, and I, I like that balance because it makes the album easy to get through, it helps with the pacing, and it also gives it a lot of variety. Yeah, there's really only one track in there I didn't like, and that's Pink Slime, which co coincidentally, you know, I really don't like the idea of Pink Slime either, so yeah. it just mm -hmm. kind of set me up for, sure. for not liking it. But but overall, I thought that there was a number of, of very good tracks here, and, and I love, like you said, the balance between the mm -hmm. seriousness of the album and the, and the seriousness of the approach of the songwriting mm -hmm. and just the general, you know, levitivity of the lyrics. And, yeah. and it shows to have fun with it. I mean, that's what Ariel Pink's Haunted Graffiti is all about. Um, I'm sitting, Tom, I, I like this album. I, I struggled with it at first. It actually gave me headaches at first. <laughs> 
Um, I, would, I would try That's to funny. work while while listening to it, mm -hmm. and then it just didn't work. But I found that the more I paid attention and tried to break apart all the little things going on in the so in the sound, I really really got into it, and I found that it, that the album was just super engaging. And the more I dug at it, the more I liked it. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking um, I'm going like 83 on this one. I'm gonna go 79, mm -hmm. and I, I really did like this album. I want to get out there that more the reason I'm not going into the 80s isn't really a huge knock against the album itself. It's more just for my own taste. Yeah. Like I like this, but it's more more of a novelty thing. Right. It's more of the reason I like going into Spencer's Gifts and looking around and I have a good time but I never buy anything, you know? It's just one of those things that's fun but it doesn't doesn't quite work for me and what I'm looking yeah, for. Entirely. There's just, you know, not enough really interesting sex toys for you to buy <laughs> in, in this album, right? You know. No, you, yeah, you exactly. Do, you yeah, do yeah. have that track, you know, Symphony of the Nymph, yeah, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, that Never mind. We're gonna stop. <laughs> Guys, what did you think of this album? And did you prefer this album over before today, or did you prefer mature themes? Um, let us know. www.velocitiesandmusic.com or youtube.com. Ah, music. It ah, fell. Ah, we're gonna have to fix that, or else I'm gonna be like burnt. We're gonna get a tan now. Do you have any <laughs> lotion? Do you have any lotion? I'd like it. You're just talking about sex toys. We're not talking about lotion now. <laughs> Studio's falling apart. We gotta, we gotta, end, we gotta this. end this. All right, guys, leave us a comment. Follow us on YouTube and Twitter. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. We are VMTV, moving music critique forward.